Hi, my name is Jordan Bucken, and I'm going to be doing the walkthrough for you on your new, brand new Airstream. I'm going to start right up front here at your front tongue jack. So you'll see right below you have a manual front tongue jack that you can crank up and down right like, just like this. That's going to be able to hook up to your truck right there and also lets you level out the front of your trailer when you're on your campsite. So this here can be changed out to an electric if that is something that you do want. Uh, it just makes it easier. It has an up and down button plus a light on it for practicality and ease. Uh, we could be moving on to the propane tanks next, which I'll get you to park to this other side. This is your cover here. I'm going to open it right up. You'll see there is two 20 pound propane tanks right inside. Nice and easy, open and close right on each of them here. Now these also do have a regulator behind it. You'll see this little white knob thing. This actually turns. So you can go left and right here. You'll see I just turned it left. We're getting a green spot there that's saying that the propane tank is full. Uh, going to the other one, it'll turn over and it is also full because we fill both the propane tanks for you. You'll see it's nice and easy. That is how you source out what propane tank you're gonna be using for the inside. When you go over to change your tanks there, you can take one out and flip that dial to the side that you still have that propane tank on and go fill up your propane, then have both tanks running when you get back. This right here is a little latch, you just pull that down. It is always good to be firm on that so that it doesn't wiggle when you're driving. Nice and easy to do. You'll see we also did install the two six, va uh, six volt batteries ready to go for you. Now that is gonna give you a good solid week of dry camping if you are uh, using the Airstream carefully, of course, for power-wise. Uh, right now, I do have the Airstream plugged in, so I'll be able to show you everything. You'll see there is a little spot right here. Uh, that is actually a portable solar panel plug-in. If that is something that you want to go for and extend your stay even longer, you're more than welcome to do so. It's just nice and easy adapter you may need, depending on the solar panel you have, that will plug right into that. That is pre-wired to the batteries already, ready to go. Uh, before we move too much further, I do have a couple more things to point out down there. Uh, you'll see there is a metal bar right here. That is actually to crank down your spare tire. You might not be able to see it in the video, but it'll make a little more sense when you get it in person there. Uh, there's a crank jack that you will actually just start cranking and it gets your spare tire down. Uh, one more thing over here is this right here. It's be again a little hard to see in the video. Um, but what that is, is a LP port. It, what it is, is an output for propane. So if you want to say hook up a fire pit or a barbecue or anything like that, you can do so from that propane output there. That is from your propane tanks right here. So one thing you just have to keep in mind if you do want a fire pit or anything like that, that it is a low output ready for RVs as this propane is already regulated. Um, I'll actually keep right here because I'm going to undo these latches as you'll see is on both sides of this window here. Lift that up for you. So you'll see underneath here, this is your actual window up front and there's gonna be two black knobs on either side. You actually tighten it by going, uh, of course, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You can do that on both sides here. Lift this one up so it's nice and even. There you go. Now you got the front window open. You can actually open this window from the inside so it actually gets that cross breeze going. It's nice and easy to do, and plus this works as a good old extra tint if you do want to block out more sun uh, and then again nice and easy undo I'll loosen it up on both sides Make sure it's nice and loose so it does go down all the way and then pull these up to lock it in place of course you want to make sure this is locked in place before you drive away as you do not want your window flapping about so as you can see they're nice and easy to do uh, going along the side here, this of course is your portable water tank, it says it right here. Um, what that is, is it's actually going to be your gravity feed for your water tank. You can actually stick your water hose right in there, uh, just like say we have right here, and it will fill your tank directly in there, it will dump right in, gravity feed straight down. We do keep it locked as it's uh, 
will get past your keys when you uh, pick your up your trailer, of course, and you can unlock that and check that out. In these two compartments here, there's actually the back of the fridge. So I'll, I'll open one up so you can see inside. Just give me a little minute here. These are a little... I have little latches and locks right here that just kind of pop right out once you get them in the right position. There we go. So you'll see there's not a whole lot you can do in there, except this right here is your drain plug. So when your fridge is running, you might see a little bit of water dripping out of here, and that's okay. That is just the drain or Sorry, the drain working for the fridge. So nice and easy to do. A uh, little thing you can do for, because this does get a little warm in there. You actually can get mesh strips for a long here and it works so bugs and bees don't go inside. You know, bees like to make nests in warm places. So it's just a little helpful tint, tint there. I'm gonna just do this back up for you quick. There we go. So below this, I do have something to show you as well. So right underneath here, there's going to be your sewage hose holder right there. So what you do is you just open this up, just lefty loosey, righty tidy, and that will open right up and you can actually stick your sewage hose right inside. It's nice and easy storage, so uh, it keeps it out of the way, keeps everything nice and clean. Just gonna move on over to the side here as I have two components right here to talk about. The top one is going to be your city water connection. So, it's a little cap on here. It's just gonna be loosen up so you can see. You'll see it's just directly right for a hose to go right inside there. Now for this, uh, you do wanna use a water pressure regulator. Uh, that's something you can pick up from our parts store. You can actually attach it right from here to the hose enabling you to bring the pressure down from the campsite you're at it may be at 100 psi or uh, around that even 90 this will bring it down to 45 what the trailer is actually regulated for so that is something that uh, i would definitely recommend picking up if you're going to campsites there and uh, if you're not going to be dry camping now this is just of course righty tidy lefty loosey to get that back on i'll leave it right there i was going the wrong way there we go Nice and easy to put on. Now, for that as well, you do want to, if you're at a campsite, you do want to use a clean water hose. What that looks like is a white hose with a blue strip and the blue lining inside. Uh, for campsites, especially if you're going to something like a provincial park or a lot of private ones, of course, require those as well as they would like to make sure you're using a clean water hose and not just a regular garden hose. Or something you can pick up from the parts store as well. Right down below, now this is something, uh, same kind of hookup there you'll see is uh, just a smaller, is the black tank flush. So what that is, is actually it sprays water into your black tank to clean it out and give it that nice cleaner look when it's all done. It flushes everything. You can just use any regular hose for that, which is nice. And that goes hand in hand with your sewage output right down here. Let you peek underneath there. So you'll see there's the cap right here, which you can turn off and that's, or sorry, take off. That's where you're going to be putting and attaching your hose. So you'll attach your hose, uh, sewage hose, sorry, I should say that, right onto there, move it into the ground, which some places will require an actual locking piece. So that may be something that you need to look at as well. Lock it into the ground. Then once that is there, you can pull this black handle and that will actually flush out your black tank. So that is going to be all of your sewage water going out that drain there. Now, uh, this will be a little bit more easier to understand once we're inside as I'll show you the functionality of how everything works for your wet bath. Uh, but all of that goes into the one tank, you dump it out. Then we come back to this black tank that I was talking about to clean out that whole system. 
So it's nice and easy where it's right here and you don't have to take a hose to the inside and put it down the toilet or anything like that. Nice and easy, plug it to the outside, turn it on, cleans it right out. Just make sure you keep your valve open so that water comes out and not overfills. Uh, moving on to right here, this is the hot water tank. I'll open this up for you as well. Uh, there's actually not a whole lot for you to do in here, but I still wanted to show you a few things. This right here is the pressure release valve. So you may see some water drips or steam coming out of there as the pressure needs to release. Um, another thing to notice here is this white plug you have down here. When you plan on storing or winterizing your Airstream, you do wanna make sure this plug is undone as you don't want water or antifreeze in here. Uh, now, of course, you'll just basically undo it. You can sit it in here and that will drain this water tank fully. Uh, there will also be a few low point trains, uh, drains, sorry, along the bottom of the trailer. You might've seen some underneath the holding tank there when you were down there. Uh, if you scroll back in the video, you should be able to see that. They're just little valves that you can open up and that will fully drain everything out, especially when you are getting ready to put the trailer away. Uh, moving on to this right here, that is actually your output for your furnace. So there is going to be hot air coming out of this area. So just make sure you're not touching it or putting any chairs on it or anything like that as it blows out hot air from your output of your furnace. I will show you the function of that inside. A couple more components to look at right here. This is your 30 amp connection for your trailer. You'll see the light is on because we are plugged in to 30 amp, full powered up. Um, it says just right on the outside, here's 30 amp locking. So nice and easy to turn this off to lock it. Righty, uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And we actually also are giving you a 30 to 15 amp adapter. So what that is, is uh, right now this prong is a three prong larger plug, which you'll see is on plugged in right to our 30 amp there. Uh, 30 to 15 will actually bring it down to a regular household plug there. So if you wanna charge your batteries, get it ready to go before you go camping, nice to do so right at your house. So you just plug that in right to the 15 amp there get it charged. Then we have right below it is your cable input. So if you are at a campsite or maybe outside your house and you want to run some cable, you can actually run that coax right to this line here, plug it in and it's wired up to the TV, ready to go. Uh, now we're going to go along the back here as we now reach the back end where the storage cubby is, you'll see I have a sewage hose here for you, which is a 20 foot sewage hose ready to go. Uh, you'll see it connects to the trailer by this end. You just crank it on there. You'll see there's little locking pieces at the end of there and stick it right into the hole there. Like I said, you may require a locking piece to, that will slide into this end. Uh, but those are always nice to have. Move this so you can see in a little bit more here. You'll see you have the containers all ready to go. Uh, this one, I'll bring this open for you. Stored this in here just so I wouldn't forget. This right here is the propane line that I was talking about up front for that quick connect system. Nice and easy to work. You quick connect that and you can run that to your barbecue or what you plan on using there. Uh, you also see in here is that 30 to 15 amp adapter that I was talking about to charge your batteries and to plug in at home. Let's back up, put that away. Go. I also have a couple more things to show you here. This right here is actually just for the awning. So I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna place this right up front. And then this, I believe it's going to be for our uh, spare tire up front. The crank for it will be ready to go right here, which I'm gonna leave right here for now. So you'll see at the back here is your backup camera. 
The monitor is inside and will need to be plugged into your truck. So unfortunately we can't show you that today. You see the backup camera is up there. I do have the monitor inside uh, the trailer right now. You plug it into your 12 volt in your truck or whatever you plan on towing with and that will get you ready to go and be able to use this while you're towing it. Um, right back here, just in case you had a question on this, this is just your license plate holder. So when you do uh, put on insurance to get your license plate, it's nice and easy to screw in there, of course. There is a couple of LED lights all the way through. Uh, going along the side, you'll see all we have here is a couple plugins for you. So nice little outside door, outside plugins. Now the awning, that is the other main thing on this side here. I'm just gonna grab this bar here. You'll see you get a full handle and then you get that little red piece here to unlock it with. Up top here, I'm gonna be basically using this as a pointer right now, is there's a couple locks right up here. So you just wanna turn that nice and easy and then drop that out here. That is the lock for the awning. Okay, I'm gonna lock this up. Lock it there. I'm actually gonna close the door for this just to make sure it's out of the way. Let's, let's be able to see a little bit better. Uh, you'll actually see right when I talk about the door, this right here is a little lock for the door so to keep it right against the wall. Uh, nice and easy to do. I'm gonna come back to this in a minute here because we're gonna focus on the awning. Now you'll see there is a nice little pull strap right up here. I just have to get this piece into. And then what you do is you just pull it out to you until you can grab it. Now, of course, keep pulling it until this flap goes down. And then you wanna hold on to this flap as you do want to bring this bar right here, which I just grabbed from this piece, to the front end of the trailer here. Piece that you go into, you'll see right here that you can actually do that right there and that will actually stop the awning from rolling back now you want to of course do that on both sides which i'll do for you there we go put this down for a second now you have your awning which you can adjust from here as you'll see there is little knobs that loosen it on these so now we're gonna put the awning away. I've already put these bars into position here so that we can actually roll up the awning. You do wanna make sure it is all the way rolled out so you get this full fabric piece because as you're pulling, pulling it away, we wanna make sure we're going nice and slow and allowing this to be held onto. And we just don't wanna let go because that's gonna keep on going. You do wanna use this to let it go back nice and slow here so we still have this handle to grab onto when we're all done, as you can see at the top. Now, of course, you do want to lock these back up before going anywhere and letting it go. Nice and easy there. And same on the other side. So then, now that we got the awning back, I'm going to show you one more thing before we go inside, and that is this right here. So this is actually for your outdoor shower. Uh, which you'll be able to see a little bit more when we go inside here because that actually is the port for your shower to come through from the inside. Let's open the door here, latch it on to this piece that I showed you. As you give it a little push, that it will latch it into place. Pull this and that unlatches it. Perfect. Uh, actually, I'll show you this as well. This, give it a little pull here, is your screen door. So this one latches in here, and then you have a little piece that covers this area. And then you're good to go with your screen door right there. Uh, again, you give that little pull to unlatch it. Close it back to the door. Oops. And you're ready to go. Uh, you'll see your handle is right here for your actual lock itself. And then you'll have the deadbolt right down here. This is your handle lock for this handle here. Lock it and you can't move it. Unlock it and you can move it. That deadbolt again right there. Two ways to lock your trailer. 
So let's pop inside now. So welcome to your new Airstream. So as you see, it's very beautiful in here. Uh, I have a few things to show you all the way around. So we're gonna be going to this one by one here. Uh, first, I'm gonna start right at this front edge. Uh, right here where you'll see there is going to be your radio system. So that right there I do have going on right now. Uh, we, as you can see, it works as a volume in and out, or sorry, for up and down. Uh, this does have Bluetooth, auxiliary, and USB right here so that you can run everything. Uh, and you'll notice there is a little microphone right up top here for when you do have that Bluetooth and you need to answer a call. It is right there, gonna pick up your voice and you're gonna be able to talk to your phone there. Uh, now that, you can do it by source. Uh, click through it, you'll see auxiliary, Bluetooth audio, like I was saying. Um, it's gonna do the tuner, is going to be back to the radio there. And then once you plug in a USB, you can actually go to the uh, USB as well system right on the side. Um, right at the top here, you'll also see two USB plugins for charging. If you do want to charge your phone or anything like that, it's a nice, easy way to plug it in. And this all gets covered right like this. Okay. These are just easy, nice thing to do up and up on that one as well. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second. I forgot to tell you one thing about this. If you do want to uh, turn it off completely, you, you're, you hold down on this sort button right there and that turns, you can see the screen right off. Um, if you do want to have that fully put away, take out this entire system here, you can actually flip this open. You'll see there is a room for a DVD, which is pre-wired to the TV in the back, but I'll get to that. And you can actually take this whole system out by doing that, placing it in the case and taking it with you keep that case right here uh, this right here is that screen that I was talking about for the backup camera so you'll see it plugs right into your 12 volt for your truck or your uh, TV that you're towing with and uh, works as your backup camera there close these back up um, next thing I'll talk about is well the front window we can always show you here this right here is your latching system so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pause the camera here. I'm going to pop outside and open up that screen flap that I showed you earlier so we can open up this window. So now that I have the front part of the window open, you'll see it's a lot more clear because that tint is on that auto shell there. Uh, so you have two locking points for this window. As you can see, the silver, you do want to open them up like this and then you can turn them nice and easy, opens it up. Now you'll see on the outside, there is three points that you can actually open this window to. Uh, one being right here, uh, locking it in that place right there. Um, that's number one, and then you can pull it out, go to number two, which is right there. You'll see a nice open breeze, plus you go all the way up to the top and open it up. You really get that airflow going. Uh, so that's really nice to have. And again, you just have to open up that front screen, lock it in the place, and then we're gonna drop it down here. And then we'll lock it into place here. So again, you do wanna just turn this, push in so it actually latches. Turn this, push in. You saw the, can see the window fully latching in. And then you can close your screen on the outside and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna just be getting out of the dinette here. Uh, the next thing we can talk about is the actual dinette itself, as the dinette does have some storage under it. Um, sorry, I'm just having a little issue with the mic, so I'm doing this at the same time. Uh, right here, there we go, is you'll see this full pull-out drawer for your storage right underneath there. And then you'll have a little bit of a cubby space right when you walk in as well. Good place for shoes and whatnot. Um, before we go to this other side, you'll see there's a few more things. Um, underneath here, you'll see is your hot water tank and your water pump. It's going to be hard to see in the video as that is just underneath your dinette. 
Now, that is your main area where you're going to be winterizing as well. So when you go to winterize your trailer, you're gonna be opening up that compartment and getting to the back of your hot water tank to use your bypass. You wanna bypass that hot water tank so we get no antifreeze in the system. Plus your water pump is underneath there that actually has a separate line attached to it that you can put right into the anti antifreeze there turn on your pump and run all your taps so it does come directly from the bottles and you don't have to do any dumping on the outside. Uh, very nice there to use. I'm gonna show your pump in a couple minutes here, but we're gonna just finish up with the front end then we'll get to that. Uh, so continuing on down this area here, there's a couple more things. Right here you'll see is the propane detector. So uh, what that is, is if you have a propane leak, this sensor will go off. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, as when your batteries are super, super low for the front, this will go off as it thinks it is going to be dying to its lifetime as well as these have a uh, certain life expectancy. So once you reach that life expectancy, it's going to be patty to replace, or if your batteries are getting low, it might beep as well. So just keep in mind that. At the very end of the dinette there, you are going to see a little knob. So that knob is actually for your battery disconnect. You can actually turn it left to go on and right to go off, I believe, if I'm looking at it correctly. That is if you want to disconnect all power getting into your trailer so you have no draws at all. It's especially good when you're not using it. It's good to come in here, flick that onto the off position so you're not getting any power drains. Um, good thing for storage too is you want to make sure it's done and then because this runs off the front batteries like i was saying that will cut all power to that as well to save that little draw you're getting a couple other things we have underneath at the very end you'll see a nice plug in there for you plus a cable coax so that is also if you want to have a tv up front somewhere here you can plug in that cable and the tv and run it directly up front uh, other than the TV in the back, that might be something nice you might want to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these two remotes here. One is for the TV you have in the back. One is for your actual radio system there. I'm going to be moving this stuff because I'm going to show you something with the table. I'm just going to move this right here for now. We'll come back to the kitchen. So uh, this table can actually become a bed. So nice way to do that. You'll see there's two little silver brackets there. You're going to be holding onto your table, lifting it up so it comes off that. There's that little metal bracket swing. You'll see there is this metal pole that you do want to fold up as well. There's a little latch on here, a little black latch, this pull down, and it locks into place there. So from there, you can actually make this into a bed by lifting up your dinette cushions, which I'm just going to actually place one right here. Lift up this side here. Put this, do the same thing on the other side. And then we can lower the table down. Has a little sitting point down there. You'll see that is now down. You push the cushions in the middle. And now we have our bed. Uh, you can extend it, of course, a little bit by moving these. You'll see there is more room that you can use there. Placing these back. Now to get the table back, it's basically you just do the same thing, just backwards. Cushions can go right there. Cushions can go right there. And then you just need to lift the table out of place here. Which does just curve up into place into its locking pieces there. Uh, you'll see those silver mounting pieces again. Push that on beneath. And then you just have to remember to bring down your table leg. So it's got that little lock again. Put it into place just like that. And you're ready to go as a table again. I'm gonna place my items there that I was using. Then we can move on to the kitchen. So kitchen right here of course you'll have a few items of storage up here uh you'll see that's just a plug for the microwave that we are using right there 
cloud. That works just, of course, as a simple microwave. You'll see popcorn, all that kind of stuff, nice and easy. Now this right here is your Dometic stovetop. So you'll see you can close that, works as a nice count, extra counter space if you are chopping up anything, or open it and get ready to start cooking. So to do this, you'll see that both of them I have on off. I'm gonna turn this as you're watching here, you'll see that's big light or a big flame, little flame and light. While you're doing that, you actually wanna push down on it and spark it and you'll see the flame has started. Then you can go to the right to go a low flame, left to go higher flame. This works on both of them. Continue going to go off. Show you it again. Push down, turn it. You can hear the flame going, you light it. See this one is actually the bigger burner. Go to low, uh, let go. If you wanna go to high, push down, go to high. From there, turn off. Nice and easy to do. Close it back up, you're ready to go. Right below here we have our fridge. So there's a couple things I'll show you here. Uh, first off, I'll open this. You can see inside your fridge, you have your fridge and freezer there, ready to go. The main component is going to be right here. So you actually have two buttons, which is gonna be on and off. Right here, you'll see nice and easy to do. You push and push. This one right here is going to be how your pro or your fridge is actually running. So right now we are actually pushed in, which is gonna set off the automatic. So it will automatically source off electricity first, being if you're plugged in. And if you're not plugged in, it will automatically source off your propane tanks up front. If you do want it just to specifically run off propane, you can push this button and it will just run on propane there. Um, of course, if it's not lighting or anything like that, it will give you another light saying check right there. So I just usually like to leave them on auto as they will automatically source what to power off of. Uh, moving over to the actual sink itself, you'll see you have a little cutting board here and a nice sink for you to use there. The window up front by your sink is a tiny bit different as number one, it has a little bit of a tin blinds. It actually has metal blinds um, as it is by the stove, fire safety, of course. And then this right here is to open your window. You just screw this. You'll see it opens it right back up. That's a nice little more airflow there. Close this, latch it. You want to make sure you do tighten that all the way there so that you do block out uh, if it is raining all the rain. You do have a little light above you too, which is nice and easy. You have a middle point that will do one side and then a full to do both. Then you'll see this right here. This is going to be a couple of your key components here. Uh, as I was talking about that water pump before, this is the button for it. If you are dry camping, you want to source off of your water tank you need to pressurize that water with this water pump. That will actually pressurize the water. I just turned it on and you can actually hear it running. Now you might not be able to hear in the video, but if you do that at home, you can hear it pressurizing and then you can actually wa run water into your system. Nice and easy to work. Um, if you are on city water, of course, you won't need your pump running as that is bypassing your water tank and is already pressurized water. Three more little things on here. Uh, these are all buttons actually. So this will give me a battery reading, a fresh water reading as I do have water in the system right now. And uh, for your black tank, that is going to be uh, your shower and toilet and all of that all combined in your tank there. That will give you your reading in percentages of how full you're getting. Now for your black tank, I do recommend emptying it when you're at about 75% as that has built the pressure that will shoot all the stuff out of the tank, but of course is not too full. So a little bit of a, a key feature there. Um, down below as well is your hot water heater button to turn it on, nice and easy, on. Let some water run after that when you got that pump going, if you're dry camping or if you're uh, plugged in, you don't need it again. Uh, but flick that on, run some water, that'll get that hot tank water going, get some water flowing in there. 
Uh, everything else is just going to be, you know, you have storage, cutlery, of course, right here, and a little more storage underneath. Close these back up. Before I come across, I'm just going to talk about these since we're right here. You'll have two things, which is going to be, number one, your screen that will go actually in front of the bathroom here. And you'll see it has a lock actually into a lock place right by my finger here that you can lock it away. And now you have full privacy for the bathroom or for changing or whatever you need there. And, and we can lock it back into place so it doesn't go moving around while we're driving. Uh, next thing around here is actually just storage, which you'll see is right in there. Um, nice closet rod right up front. You'll see down here is also that's just going to be um, another component that we'll, we'll touch in in a couple minutes here. Then underneath, you'll actually see your inverter control, or sorry, your solar controller. Uh, so what that is, is because you have a solar panel on the roof, that is going to tell you your reading of your solar panel and uh, be able to, for you to actually know if you're drawing in any, any power right now. Um, we are underneath a roof right now, so we are not going to be drawing a whole lot of power. Uh, that's why you're seeing a low amperage on there right now. Close this back up. I'm going to touch on everything in here in a second because I want to go open this for you because this is your bathroom, of course. You'll see this is an all-in-one, um, so you're more than welcome to step in there. You'll see a few things as if we look, we're going to start at the top here. Uh, I'm actually going to step in so I can show you a few things. Oops. This right here is your vent. So easy to do is you open it by pushing up, pulling down, and get that closes it. When you open it there, there's a little red button here. You'll see a nice little fan clearing up. So you do want to run that when you're showering. And of course, it's always nice for the bathroom as well. A um, couple other things is you'll see a nice little cabinet mirror, of course, uh, so that you can store everything in. I, can't, I won't really show you that in the video. You'll see the light right here as well. Um, this shower head, which uh, you can actually remove from the wall here. This is one of that, that features that I was talking about outside. You see this little hatch right down here. I'm gonna step out here so you can see a little bit more. That is actually where you can use your outdoor shower. So you stick this actually right outside and that could be your outdoor shower nice and easy. Uh, I'm dripping a little bit from the shower head because I did turn on the water pump and also tested this all out right before you got here or before we started the video just to make sure everything worked. Um, you'll see to turn on the shower, it's a hot and cold nozzle right down there. Toilet paper roll, which you can sit along there. Toilet, of course, is a, lift this up, is a foot flush. So what you do is you step on it halfway to get water in the bowl. As you can see, I'm pumping water. Full step to flush it down there. Nice and easy to do. It's always nice that you, uh, I usually like to leave a little bit of water in the bowl there. Now, when you are using your toilet, you do want to use specific toilet chemicals um, as you want to keep the smell down. Now, we carry those in our store and uh, you can drop them into your water tank with your a little bit of water about a half toilet flush of water there that will go into your water tank it'll break everything down that goes in there and it keeps the smell down as well of course uh, going back to the toilet paper in that subject as well you do want to use rv toilet paper as it does break down inside that tank and from that chemical a lot easier than any other toilet paper would and you don't want uh, thick toilet paper going in there and gunking up the whole system as your levels wouldn't read right plus you might get a stoppage when you're trying to empty um, so I'll close that back up here now a uh, couple more things to talk about which I'm gonna just step inside again see there's curtains going along both sides which is nice and then you'll get this right here this is actually a closed drying line so what I did is I pulled that from this side here all the way around and it's nice because you can actually hang anything on there and then it just goes back into place right back into that spot um, and then you do have of course your blind when you do want to block out everything going on here and it does latch onto right here so it goes further down um, of course you don't 
really want to have anyone peeking in there if you are showering, so it's nice to do that. Uh, close this back up here. Now, before I get, go into the bedroom here, above me is your AC. Uh, so I'm going to touch on your AC and your furnace next. But how we do that, you'll see that this right here is opening these vents. Uh, this is actually your intake right there. So you can always uh, open up more vents along here, along the sides. So uh, nice and easy. You can open up those for more airflow wherever you want to direct that airflow. Close them all up if you want just that one certain area. Uh, to work it, you have this right here, which is a, more of a temperature gauge. So you go from warmer to colder from that way. And then you can actually turn it on here. You'll kind of, I don't know if you can hear this in the video, but it does pump out a good amount of air right here. And like I said, if you want more air directed into the living room, close that, open this up, you'll feel more air blowing out that way. A couple different settings here for you to go to and uh, makes it a nice system there. Uh, now we do have your furnace on the side wall here. So I'm gonna let you sneak in and take a look at this. So right here is your furnace control. There's a couple of knobs on here, one at the bottom and one on the top. The one on the top right here is actually for your furnace to turn on and off. So I'll just turn that actually to the left for on. This dial, you move it and then you'll hear actually a little click. That is actually the noise of engagement there, which it just did. It just turned on your furnace that I actually just feel going on at my feet right now and you can change the temperature to higher to lower there, and then off from up top. Nice and easy for your furnace, a uh, little light switch for right above us, of course. Now while you're over here, I'll show you these right here as well. You'll see a U two USBs just like up front there, and another two right there. So just for charging phones and everything, ready to go, nice and easy. Um, then actually, if you go to the other side here, you'll see you have your TV. So I actually have your TV running right now. So your TV can, there's a little pull handle right down here. If you do want to situate it better, if you're going towards your bed or anything like that, nice and easy to do. Or if you even want to rotate it so you can see it from your dinette, you can do so. Um, you might be wondering why we're getting some free TV right now. This is actually off the air. So we are getting about 10 channels where we are right now. And that is working from right here, right that little black button with the green light beside it is actually your control for your satellite. So uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, not satellite, your antenna. You'll see there's a little antenna on the roof. You push that, that turns it on. I'm actually gonna push it. You'll see it pauses the TV, cuts off that air. Nice and easy to work. It's a nice feature to have as you may not have a cable, but you may want to find some free TV here. Um, we can always start washing and relax from there. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is we're going to pause this video again and we're going to change the angle and show you a couple more things. So what you're looking at now is actually underneath your bed. So you'll see there is a little bit of storage in the middle and then on the left as we were just showing you there is your converter. So that is going to be your where you have your breakers and fuses. So I would always suggest carrying some extra fuses wherever you go, just in case you might blow something and uh, the breakers are just work like at home, you flip them on and off there if anything ever happens to blow. Uh, that flap does close by just lifting it up. I'm just gonna leave it open right now since we got the view. And I'm gonna rotate you to the right hand side where you'll see that is actually an output for your furnace. Uh, that's why I felt a little bit of air when we turned it on there. It direct output right out there so you get the nice heat flowing right underneath your bed, warms you up at night, nice and warm. I hope you enjoyed your walkthrough for your brand new Airstream. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to call our parts department and they will gladly help you out. Uh, again, congratulations on your purchase and I hope you enjoyed.